as we know, Republicans don't shy away from saying some of the most horrific things about their political opponents. They've empowered QAnon, which goes around accusing its political opponents of being child predators and child sex traffickers, all sorts of nonsense. But now anonymous Democratic donors are upset with Joe Biden's incoming deputy chief of staff. Her name is Jen O'Malley. Uh, Jen O'Malley Dillon, I should say, for a comment that she made about Republicans. So um, angry Biden donors complained to him about Dillon labeling the administration's future legislative partners across the aisle as a bunch of, a bunch of effers. It, she did so in a glamour profile. Biden during the presidential campaign emphasized unity, which he probably shouldn't have, and then he continues doing it. And it's really embarrassing because these are not people that you want to unify with. That's that's what the rest of the graphic should be. Now. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what Kaylee McEnany had to say about all of this today. Kaylee McEnany said, "Effers, they think we're deplorable, irredeemable effers." To which I say, yes. People like Kaylee McEnany who lied to the American people on behalf of a president who had no interest in doing the right thing, even during a pandemic. These people are efforts, they're deplorable efforts, sorry. I also want to remind you that back in 2012, uh, Kaylee McEnany said this about Barack Obama. How I met your brother, never mind, forgot, he's still in that hut in Kenya, hashtag Obama TV shows. Oh, mm. Are we supposed to apologize for hurting Kaylee McEnany's feelings? Why are Democratic donors making a big deal about this? Yeah, I, I know why, um, because they're Republicans. Um, no, yeah, I'm not joking. Bingo, bingo. Oh. No, no, I 100%. You're absolutely right. So uh, a lot of the top donors give to both Democrats and Republicans, which is logical. Uh, you, you're bribing both sides, and whoever wins, you win. Because when they give the equivalent of a dollar to a politician, uh, and I've shown you this in the past, they get back about two thousand dollars for every dollar they contribute. So it depends on the situation and that's a certain time period and I can go into a long explanation. But if you're gonna get $2,000 back, it, the smart play is to give a dollar to the Republican and a dollar to the Democrat. Make sense? So that's why they do, a lot of them do. And even for the Democratic donors that don't get don't give to Republicans, they're, some of those folks are good people on social issues. They're not racist or bigoted or anything like that, but they, still are very conservative economically. They're like, no, I want my tax cuts and you'll deregulate my industry. But just don't be mean to black people. Okay, so that's what separates a lot of top Democratic donors and Republican donors. And sometimes it, nothing separates them because they're the same person. So those same donors then come and say to Democrats, don't you ever criticize Republicans. That's exactly how the Democratic Party got neutered. So think about it, guys, and every one of you will relate to this. Whenever Republicans win, do you see anybody ever saying, oh, they gotta reach out to liberals. Trump has to reach out to Democrats and liberals and oh, he didn't reach out enough. Oh, Mitch McConnell, he's gotta reach out and make liberals happy. No, that's no one ever says that. That's not an expectation in Washington. No Republican donor says, now make sure you're good to the people trying to raise my taxes. Be more polite to them, right? But. Again, I get infuriated by the media because no one ever notices, hey, whenever a Republican wins, they say it's a mandate. Trump lost the popular vote by 3 million last time and called it a mandate and said, that's it. I never have to work with Democrats again. Now remember, in the last two years, the Democrats had the House. So under mainstream media logic, well, no, you gotta go kiss Nancy Pelosi's ass. You have, you have to be good to her. You have to say great things about Democrats. No, they never do that, but the minute, a Democrat wins. They're like, you, well, you got to be nice to the Republicans. You got to, you, you're bipartisan. You got to be nice to Republicans. <gasps> you, you said a naughty word about a Republican. You have to go out there and apologize. And by the way, guess what? She walked it back today. She said, Oh, come on. Come on, Jank. I didn't said, see, I didn't see that choice, update. Poor word choice, etc. blah, blah, blah. Uh, and humiliating walking back of that statement because the donors made her do it. Now look, she was Biden's campaign manager. They barely won this election. It was 77,000 votes in four states that made the difference. A an election they should have crushed in. And they ruined it for down ballot Democrats. 
and she is nowhere near a progressive. I am not a fan of hers at all. The only thing I agree with her is calling Republicans efforts and <laughs> making her go out and apologize for that. Look, I'll give you one last thing, Anna alluded to it. There's a poll out and it's backed up by another poll. So there's, it's not an accident, it's not wrong. 50% of Trump voters think that the Democratic leadership runs a child sex trafficking ring. 50%, another 33% are not sure they might or might not be child pedophiles and organized criminal gang of child pedophiles. That's what they got 88% of Republican voters to believe that and think it definitely is or might be possible. That's what they did to Democrats. And no one in the media ever asked them to apologize. Nobody ever said, "Oh my God, you called Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden child molesters. <gasps> you can't ever work with them. You got to go apologize. You got to get on your hands and knees. No, 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 that's totally fine. No problem, no problem. But one staffer says one curse word, a curse word, by the way, that Trump uses all the time. And then the fake outrage. Oh my God, what have they done to the poor, poor Republican? You have to apologize, you monsters, you Democrats that are so mean to Republicans. How do you see all this and you don't see the media calling it out and think that that, that there isn't a game being played on you? Man, well, look, uh, there are some Democrats who refuse to apologize uh, for saying things uh, that are just true about their political opponents. And one of them I, I want to give some credit to uh, Republican, I'm, I'm sorry, not Republican. Representative Jared Huffman, he's a Democrat. He represents California's second district. And back in 2018, while talking about Betsy DeVos, he said that she's dumber than a bag of hammers. And he did get a lot of heat for it. And so he has updated his position on this. But first, let me give you what the original tweet said. Dear President Trump, if you want to meet someone who has an actual IQ problem, as opposed to just being black, meet you. Uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, rich, white, and dumber than a bag of hammers. Uh, so two years later, uh, he did issue an apology. He did. Uh, this is what the apology looked like. I once took heat for calling Betsy DeVos dumb as a bag of hammers. But after four years as our Education Secretary, I now realize an apology is owed to hammers. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Look, you and I got into a pretty big debate last week about whether or not it makes sense to call Republicans dumb. And I think I was clear on the distinction, but I want to reiterate the distinction. As tempting as it is to be harsh toward voters we disagree with, average ordinary Americans, I don't necessarily think that's the right strategy. I think that if you want to persuade people, you got to find you know the common ground. I'm not saying that this applies to everyone. I want to be clear about that. But there might be some you know poorly informed, misinformed Republican voters who live in this conservative media bubble. They don't know better, but they're certainly experiencing the same economic conditions we are. They're still you know experiencing a corrupt political system much like we are. But when it comes to people in positions of power, okay, the Betsy DeVos's of the world with a million you know, different yachts and homes and all the power in the world. No, no, have at it because then you're punching up. These are people who have skirted taxes, who have taken advantage of opportunities in this country to become tremendously wealthy and they've shut the door behind them. Uh, they've uh, refused to do their patriotic duty in, in giving back to this country that made opportunities possible for them. And so I'm all for uh, punching up and going after people in positions of power. And so you wanna call Betsy DeVos dumb, which by the, by the way, she absolutely is. Have you seen her in a single interview? Have at it, I'm not gonna yeah. go after you for that. Well, so now, it, but it's easier to call Republican politicians dumb. Um, we're, <laughs> We're the only non-right wing show, not the only one, but certainly the biggest that actually will say to Democrats. And in mainstream media, that is unacceptable. Those are their best friends and you're not allowed to say it. But I'm gonna share a quote here that's gonna make drive you crazy. And then I will call Joe Biden dumb. So uh, quoting Axios, Biden wants to project a message that Republicans aren't bad people. And that when Donald Trump departs the scene, 
they may have, quote, an epiphany. Really, really, after all this time, you think Republican politicians are gonna have an epiphany? And they're gonna turn around and work with you, Joe? Nah, you don't get it, man. There's no way you could be smart if you think that. I mean, that means you're totally blind to all that has happened in the last two decades of American politics. You still think, no, nah, man, my buddy Strom Thurmond and my buddy Trent Lott and my buddy Bob Dole are gonna come in, man. They're gonna have an epiphany, man. And, and Corn Pop's gonna come in and we're all gonna work together. No, you're not. They're gonna eviscerate you. And so if you go and, and try to work with them, it's a political death trap. It, they wrestle you to the ground until you can't get anything done. And then they turn around and blame you for not getting anything done. It is the most obvious political trap of all time. And Joe Biden's walking into it like, da, 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 da. I think my friends on the Republican side are gonna have an epiphany. I'm not saying bag of hammers, but look around and find some sort of bag because that is not a smart position. I, and if you're offended by that, I don't care. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.